Okay, so we have a high yield rheumatology slash pharmacology question here. I'll be real concise. This is not an overly dramatic question, just drilling some high yield points for you. So we have this 44 year old woman with rheumatoid arthritis, our hand x-ray here, showing us a bunch of different things, the ulnar deviation. We can see that the MCPs appear to have boutonniere deformities. We can see there's PIP involvement as well, uh, swan neck deformity. Okay, so this is rheumatoid arthritis and we can see that she has elevated liver enzymes. And we say, well, how does treatment for rheumatoid arthritis relate to elevated liver enzymes? So when we talk about management for RA, we have two arms of treatment. We have symptoms only, which is NSAIDs followed by steroids, okay? NSAIDs followed by steroids, symptoms only. They do not slow disease progression, okay? Then we have DMARDs, disease modifying anti drugs, these slow disease progression. So methotrexate, almost always the first drug used. Obviously, there are exceptions, but methotrexate, usually the first agent used. It's a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor, competitive reversible, and it's known to cause hepatotoxicity. Some patients might just get a mild transaminitis. That's a high yield tangential point for you, Asimili, that if you start a hepatotoxic agent, such as statins, fibrates, the TB drugs, uh, or most of the TB drugs, uh, rifampinicinized pyrazinamide. If we talk about uh, methotrexate, okay, lithium, a patient can get mild transaminitis, and that's normal and expected, and you do not decrease the dose of the drug, okay? So uh, other patients can get overt hepatotoxicity. Methotrexate also classically causes pulmonary fibrosis. I made other questions on that. And methotrexate can cause bone marrow suppression, leading to neutropenia, which is a granulocytosis, uh, which leads to mouth ulcers, mucositis, okay? But we say, okay, this is rheumatoid arthritis, plus uh, she's on methotrexate, common drug used, and it causes hepatotoxicity. And it's a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor, competitive reversible. Which other agent listed here has the same mechanism of action? We look at the answer choices. We'll start with choice A, abatacept, wrong fucking answer. This is a CD80 slash 86 inhibitor. CD80 slash 86, also known as B7.1, 7.2. You're probably like, what the fuck? Relax, okay? Um, CD8086 is on antigen presenting cells and enables the co stimulatory signal when activating the T cell. For example, antigen presenting cell, it's going to uh, obviously pick up that antigen, it's gonna to go to the lymph node spleen, it's gonna present that to a T cell, and you have the primary signal, which is your MHC T cell receptor interaction, and then you have the co-stimulatory signal, which is your CD80 CD80/86 or B7.1, 7.2 on the antigen presenting cell, and then you have CD28 on the T cell. That's your co-stimulatory signal, okay? A lot of fun immunology there, uh, but a batacept can be used for rheumatoid arthritis. Obviously, it's just not our answer. And when students don't know an answer, they tend to choose weird shit, okay? So colchicine, high yield drug, but the wrong answer. Colchicine being a microtubule inhibitor can be used for acute gout, uh, pericarditis, uh, other high yield microtubule inhibitors, griseofulvin, antifungal, uh, mabendazole, albendazole, the anti-helminth agents, uh, classically for nematodes. We have vincristine, vinblastine for anti-cancer. We have taxanes like uh, paclitaxel, docotaxel. Uh, so these are all microtubule inhibitors. Obviously, the taxanes being the odd ones out, those hyperstabilized microtubules. Uh, colchicine and the others uh, prevent the formation of microtubules. Um, we look at teclizumab, wrong answer. That's an IL-2 receptor antagonist, a monoclonal antibody. Basalixumab is the same mechanism of action. These drugs are classically used for organ transplant recipients. IL-2 stimulates T cells. So if we knock out the effect of IL-2, we decrease T cell activation and uh, we suppress the immune system. Folinic acid, choice D, not folic acid. Folinic acid is also known as leucovorin or leucovorin rescue. That's how you reverse the toxicity of methotrexate. So obviously that's the wrong answer. It's just an easy distractor uh, because the drug we're talking about that this patient is taking is methotrexate, uh, but we're not asking for how you treat the toxicity of methotrexate, uh, which would be folinic acid or leucovorin rescue. Uh, we're asking for a drug that has the same mechanism of action as methotrexate. So infliximab, choice E, wrong answer. Infliximab, a monoclonal antibody against soluble TNF-alpha. Not TNF-alpha receptor, TNF-alpha. They they asked that distinction on USMLE. So infliximab, 
Adalimumab, uh, Golimumab, and Sirtalizumab, Pegel. Uh, those are four uh, drugs that target soluble TNF-alpha. Etanercept is high yield. That's a recombinant receptor that targets soluble TNF-alpha. Okay, Etanercept's the odd one out. It's a recombinant receptor. The others are monoclonal antibodies that target uh, soluble TNF-alpha. Okay. Uh, so pyrimethamine, choice F, correct answer. So pyrimethamine is a competitive reversible inhibitor of diadrophil reductase, same as methotrexate. And pyrimethamine is used in the treatment of toxoplasmosis. So toxoplasmosis is treated with sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine. Okay. Prophylaxis for toxo is TMPSMX, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. But the treatment for toxo is sulfadiazine pyrimethamine. They asked that on one of the NBME exams. I think it's 2CK level. Uh, I only see one question on it, but it exists, okay, uh, where they have that distinction. So um, pyrimethamine, methotrexate, trimethoprim, these three drugs inhibit dihydrofolate reductase competitively and reversibly, okay? So this is high yield, not too dramatic, not too crazy, but we're just covering some high yield points. You need to know the mechanism of action of methotrexate. You need to know the toxicities of methotrexate, and you should know that pyrimethamine and trimethoprim also inhibit diadrofolate reductase. And then knowing about leucovorin rescue, folinic acid as a treatment for methotrexate toxicity is high yield. Knowing about colchicine being a microtubule inhibitor and the other associated drugs, very high yield. Abatacept, diclizumab, not as high yield, okay? Infliximab, the anti-TNF-alpha agent, is very high yield. So a lot in there, a lot of points, right? So these are important agents to, to know for USMLE. That's it.